Coach, uh, Brandon Mayhead had quite an efficient performance tonight. What did you like about his game? And the uh, overall team performance tonight? Well, I thought, I thought it was a really good team win, first of all. And I thought Brandon did a great job of leading us. You know, he's our upperclassman, and, uh, and we have great belief in what he can do out there. And, uh, and I think he showed everyone again today uh, his ability to, to make shots, you know, three-level score. Uh, you know, he, uh, defensively, he's very active. He makes plays defensively with his hands, you know, whether steals or loose balls. I mean, he does a lot for us to help us win, and uh, I thought he had a really good game today. You have four guys with double figures in points, and you got points for Dre and CJ. Just talk about how you spread the offense. Well, that's what our offense is designed to do. Uh, you know, we don't really have a top-heavy offense. You know, we want our guys to all be involved. You know, we recruit these guys here because of their skill sets, and we think they all can contribute offensively for us. And it's good just to see the balance that we had like today. And uh, we want that most nights, you know, where our offense is balanced between our post guys, our perimeter, uh, and everyone just trusting everyone to take the shots that they're capable of making. And I thought today was a good example of that. You guys have won three out of your last four. You always want to be playing your best basketball in February going into March. Do you feel like you're getting to that point of playing your best basketball of the season? You know, we're getting there. You know, this is that time of year you want to be playing well, as you just mentioned. And uh, I think we, you know, we've, you know, historically have been well, you know, playing well during this time of year, and we hope to continue that, you know. But to do that, you know, we have to go one game at a time, as you know. That's all it takes is just one game at a time, staying focused on the next opponent, and uh, and they're taking that approach. And I think our guys have done that, you know, haven't looked too far down the road to see what's going on in the future. Just our next opponent, let's just lock in, concentrate on what we can do to get better, to give ourselves a chance to win that game. Coach, what's one point of emphasis which you'd like to see this team get better? If I could say get better at one thing, I would say, you know, defensively we still aren't defending to the level I think we're capable of. You know, we just ha we just aren't. And that's something that we have to keep working on, keep teaching, and keep talking to our guys about because at this time of year, you know, you, with, with body preservation, there's not a whole lot you can do, you know, drill-wise and, and three-hour practices. You know, that, that's, that's long gone. So, you know, with the time that we have, we still want to focus on a lot of film work, showing them where we can be better. Uh, with, you know, with our shorter practices, is just being very intent in what we're doing with our guys to make sure they understand exactly what we want and keep trying to get better because you still can get better this time of year. You know, we have a saying, you know, if you're not getting better right now, you're getting worse. And there's no in between right now this time of year. So you're either going up or you're going down. And uh, we want to continue to go up. So the way we do that is keep improving. Is there is Perry flop? <laughs> that's not my call. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a referee's call. But, you know, I, you know it's, it's hard for me to say in those plays. I mean, you know, it's just hard. Those are just difficult calls for any – it's a difficult call for a ref. If I was out there, it would be difficult for me to, to make those calls as well because this action is happening so fast and guys are so good at what they do with their body control that you just – you know, it's, it's difficult. So uh, I just take it as the ref's call, and then we move on. You know, I don't try to get distracted by those things, and I try to have my players not get distracted either. You know, I was a little disappointed at the end of the game. We got a little distracted and got a little out of character, and that's, that's not who we are. And we don't want to be that type of team. We want to stay focused on, on the task at hand. Yeah, it's a sizable lead in the second half, and you've been talking about wanting that 40-minute game. Players saying that as well. What frustrates you about seeing Tulsa creep back in that, just as Wichita did a couple of years ago? Yeah, building a lead. You know, you want to continue to build and, and build it all the way out. And, I, I you know, and, and, and I know it's very difficult because it was easy. Everyone would be doing it. But it's just a function of just staying focused the entire time. Like, some things you can't control if the ball goes in, it doesn't go in. We had some good looks that may not go in. That's understandable. But, but taking care of the basketball, unforced turnovers, uh, missed assignments a few times down the stretch, those are the things that kind of that I'm looking at that we grade our guys on that. And when you hear me say a little bit of a loss of focus, you know, we didn't play the complete 40 minutes because I'm looking at those things. And uh, we have to be better in those areas. To win like we want to win here, those are things that we have to be better in. And we, we understand that, and we're going to keep working towards it. What do you think leads to a loss of focus in stretches? Well, I think, I think with, with a lot of young people especially, you know, they look at, a, they look at the size of a lead, and sometimes in their mind it's, it's, it's insurmountable, but it's not. And teams can come back from big leads. We've done that this year. So, uh, but I think they look at the scoreboard sometimes. You, you kind of can play the scoreboard a little bit. So all of a sudden you may take an ill-advised shot that you wouldn't probably take if it was a two- or five-point game, but you're going to take it when it's a 15- or 17-point game. And those shots can kind of snowball and lead you. That shot selection can lead to – Run outs, easier opportunities for them because it's a bad shot for us. Defensively, you start gambling a little more. You're up by 15, 17, so now you may lose discipline. So you lose discipline, now you may reach and gamble and go for steals, but now you're leaving guys open with angles and opportunities for shots. And so you're playing that game where you lose a little bit of focus and you start going out there and playing a little too loose, 
And, and what that does is that gives another team a chance to get some momentum. And the momentum is tough. When the team gets momentum, I don't care who they are, they're tough to beat. And so you, you want to minimize that momentum as much as you can. What do you have to do differently uh, on Thursday to have a chance to beat Houston? Uh, we have to play well. I mean, it's a road game. We have to, you know, and they're building. And it's a tough place to play. We, you know, played there a number of times. We have to make sure we come in with a defensive mindset. You can't go into a game like that thinking about, you know, going twenty for ten for twenty three from for three. That would be great, but if you go in there with that type of mindset, that's the wrong focus. And to win on the road, you have to defend very well and you have to take care of the basketball. That gives you a chance to win. Speaking of, I'm um, taking a little. Uh, Ill-advised shots. Darren Green took some shots um, from way beyond the three-point line. A question was asked a couple weeks ago: um, Does Darren Green have the green light to shoot from anywhere on the court? Um, does he now, or um, what's the case? Uh, Darren Green has a green light for us. I mean, he's one of the best shooters to me in the nation, one of the best shooters in our conference for sure. And so he has the green light. He knows what shots he can make. And he, he's not taking shots that, that he doesn't think he can make or he hadn't taken in practice. Every shot he's took to even tonight is a shot he's taken in practice. So when guys are doing those and, and I'm watching the, the, the numbers, how consistent they're shooting them in practice, that's why he has the, the ability to shoot them in the game like that. And back to the referees. Um, so uh, there were more than a few noticeable missed calls uh, and bad calls today. Um, and in the uh, past few games, um, what's the mindset and how do you get around that as a team? First, like I, like I think I said earlier, I don't really focus in on referees and calls. Uh, you know, I think they're trying to do the best job they can do like we're trying to do the best job we can do. So at the end of the day, uh, I just trust that they're going to do their best and they're going to make what call they, the call they think is, is the right one. And I have no reason not to, not to believe that. So I don't really get into, you know, I don't get distracted by those things. I just focus on our guys, our team, and, and what we have to do. You know, anything that, that goes on out there, win or lose, I don't think it has anything to do with the referees. It usually has to do with us as players and coaches. So, you know, we have to just continue to do our part and stay focused on you know what we can control. One of your former players, B.J. Taylor, made his analyst <laughs> debut tonight for ESPN Plus. Is that that cool to see? It looked and he looked good out there. <laughs> Suit and tie, you know. I was happy to see you know. BJ, of course, go out there and have that opportunity. Uh, you know what he's meant to our program here and, and to UCF, man. What a great you know, role model he's been. I mean, he's been great for this university, our program, and everything. So uh, I'm glad he's getting this just due because that's a great opportunity for him. But uh, he's going to be terrific at whatever he chooses to do because he just has that it factor. And I think the young man is uh, – you know, really special young kid. So he, not young kid, he's now a young man. So he has, I mean, I think, his, I think he has a bright, bright future, and whatever he chooses to do, he's going to be very successful at it. Did he ever think about that, you know, that time after NBA before he got into coaching? Anyone ever approach you about doing radio or anything like that? Was that ever thing that Absolutely. About? I actually did the same thing. You know, my, one of my years I was injured with the Spurs, I actually did television. And so that was kind of my first introduction to that. And I actually did radio when I was at Duke before I became an assistant there, too. So I've actually gone down that road before coaching and uh, considered different opportunities and different options. But, uh, you know, those are all fun things, you know. The game affords you some, uh, some amazing opportunities, you know. We're all fortunate, you know, you, all of us are fortunate to, to have a chance to do what we do in this game and be a part of it because it's, it's a wonderful game. Coach, back to Houston. When they stumbled a bit here in the last couple of games, but when they're on, what did they do so well? Uh, when they're on, I mean, one, they're one of the best defensive teams in the nation. And when they're on defensively, they smother you. I mean, you don't seem like you can breathe out there on the floor. I mean, I watch, our, you know, not just us, but different teams play against them. You, may, you rarely get a good opportunity, you know, offensively against them when they're really locked in like that defensively. And offensively, I think they complement it with just understanding who they are. You know, they, this year they're more of a post-dominant team, and so they've been going inside a lot to Josh Carlton and to uh, Fabian White. Those guys have been, they've been playing off of those stalwarts and in inside and Interior. And, uh, you know, when they had Sasser and those guys before the injuries, of course, they would utilize those guys more. So they really do play to their strengths offensively real well, and those guys are productive, and then they smother you defensively. Is Thursday a must-win game? You know, to us, every game is a must-win game the way we approach them. So it's not, you know, one game or another. They're all the must-wins for us. You know, we still have a lot to play for this, this season, and, and, and we're happy to have the opportunities that we have in front of us, to be quite frank. When you look back at the Houston loss, you had cut it close there in the second half, and then they pulled away. Some missed opportunities, though, for your team. No, absolutely. You know, we had our opportunities. We had a, you know, four-point game. It's been a while ago, but I still can vivid can remember, you know, we get a good three from DP, you know, to have, have a chance to cut the one with all the momentum. And this rattles in and out. That's what I mean. You can't, 
you know, base everything on making and missing shots because some nights those, like, they went tonight and some nights they may not go. So uh, you have to base everything you can do defensively because that's something that you can be consistently good at every night. And that's something that we have to understand as a program that, you know, you don't, that you don't have to have off nights defensively. You know, the ball can go in and out. It, it can go in some nights. Some nights it won't. But defensively, there's no reason to have off nights.